there and welcome back to Building the Boys. We now have issue 96 of Hashtag's Build the Titanic to finish out the month and to finish out the year. So this is the end of 2023. Um, and we are working on the keel section again. So we have an extra piece to add to that keel section and then that is being added to the hull. So we should have a much firmer hull by the end of this one, which is a good thing. Um, coming next month, we're going pure, pure, pure hull. So we will have... Can show you here we'll have that section there will be the first one of 2024 2024 2024 i'm losing years um, so it's uh, it's gonna be a good one now there is a lot to do in this but at the same time not a lot to do if that makes sense this is just a lot of screws we're putting into this one a hell of a lot so we're going to attach this additional piece of keel to the main piece uh, and then we are putting in 20 screws. So we're using five screws to attach this to the main piece, and we are putting 20 screws into the hull. I'm not going to film me putting all 20 in, because that's just going to be dull. We'll put a few in, and then we'll take a look at it at the end. Uh, at the very end of this one, we'll be talking about Turkish baths. All about the Turkish baths on board the Titanic. Some things you may know, some things you may not know. Um, and then that will be it for, for the year. So um, let's get this one open, and let's get this one built. Okay, so this is what we get in issue 96. So have a look and see. So, a lot of screws. A lot of screws. Uh, and this is our additional piece of keel. So let's have a look at this. There we go. Now you can see we're starting to narrow. That's a good thing, because that means we're getting toward the end of the keel, doesn't it? So we're starting to narrow again. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So this is going to attach the main piece with five screws. Now we are going into metal, I believe. Let's just check these screws and I can confirm that is true. I oh, know, that's IP. So we might be going to the plastic. We may be going to the plastic section. I don't know. No, we're not. Right, so this metal, that into the plastic section, that's absolutely fine. Right, so we're going to use three in one oil to tighten that up. So let me bring up the main piece of kilt. Let's get this put together. Okay, so here's our main section of kill. Here's our new additional piece. And that is going to slot over here, like so. And then we're going to put three into this to hold this one together. And then just make sure we're using the right ones. I don't want to put the wrong bloody screws in. That'd be awful. We are using IPs to screw this one in. So we don't need to use oil on this because we are going into the, the plastic foundation base here. So we'll um, we can do that. Uh, and these are the ones that have got the large head on them. So that's that one there. So we're going to put three of these in. And then we'll have one great big piece of keel, which is a, a lovely thing. <laughs> right, here we go. This is a massive piece. This really is. I'm actually surprised because I, I didn't think we were going to put that keel section in until the, uh, the decks were on. Because um, I thought we were going to screw the decks in from underneath. But, well, clearly not. That's not what's happening, because if it was, we wouldn't be able to get to it unless they're going to ask us to take the bloody thing off again. That would be annoying, wouldn't it? Let's hope not. Let's not put that evil out into the world. <laughs> Let's hope they don't do that to us. Because I do hate that with part where it's when tell to uh, attach something, and then, like, ten issues later, tell you to take it back off. You think, well, what was the point of that exercise, then? So here's our uh, centre one here. So it's that one. One more. So this one into here. So it's that one in. So now we have one massive piece of keel. Happy with that. Right. We're now going to bring up the main hull and we're going to attach this to it and we're going to use an absolute ton of screws to do that. Okay, so here we are with her upside down, and now we are going to attach our piece of keel into here. Which I'm sure is easier said than done. It is. This is going to take some wiggling, I think. So that is now we're now looking from the bottom. I'm going to flip this one over and I'm going to screw this in place. Okay, so this is it flipped over. Now, focused on the back end of the uh, the ship, 
these four here, one, two, three, and four, are going to be IM screws. The very four at the back are IM screws. So we are going to use uh, our three and one oil for that because we'll go metal into metal. So just a touch of three and one just to help the transition. And we're going to put the first one in here. So these are where the four IM screws go. Very careful at the moment. Whoop. There we go. That's why I was being careful. Because you're actually uh, rested inside the vessel at the moment. Right, let me get these four done. We'll take a look. Okay, so those are the four in. You can see what two there, two there. Now, all of these other ones along here, there's 20 in total. Right the way down to here, we are going to put IP screws in all of those to hold this in place. That's 20 screws we've got to do. It's quite a lot. I'm just going to crack on, get these done, then we'll take a look at the finish hole. So that is that one screwed in, and man, it has made it super rigid, super, it, it feels good now. It feels solid. Uh, I really like that. So just a lot of screws to put in, a hell of a lot, but I mean, you don't have to go mental on them. Um, they hold quite nicely, and uh, it's looking good. I'm going to hold it up to the camera so you can see it properly. Let's have a chat. So I'm really happy with this, because it is feeling good now. It feels so look at this, look at that. Look at that, that is feeling good. It's feeling solid, it's feeling, yeah. <laughs> I'm really happy with this. So you can see what we've got going on there. It's looking good, right? Looking really good. This feels solid now, it feels firm, it feels good, um, it feels heavy. Um, and I'm happy with this, I'm really happy with this. Look at this beautiful girl. Look at that, stunning. It pulls together so nicely as well. So when you're doing this, you feel the pull. Um, when you're screwing this in, you feel it pulling together. And it, there's something very satisfying about that. I've said it when I've been doing the gauntlet. When you feel the kind of the, the loose bits all of a sudden, it, it starts to, you feel it. And uh, that's, a, that's a good thing. That's a beautiful thing, you know. Um, that's it for the build instructions. If you are just sticking around with build instructions, thank you for stopping by. Uh, thank you for watching us throughout 2023. Um, we hope you continue to watch in 2024. Um, if you are sticking around for our Titanic talk, we're talking about Turkish baths. And the Turkish baths on the Titanic were very grand, and it was it was an exclusive first class um, luxury. And it was basically hot and cold baths, very hot baths, full of very cold baths. The idea was they'd open your pores, you get massage treatments in there, oil treatments. It was a very beautiful thing. So did everybody from first class rush to it? Um, no, they didn't. And um, we can show you why. This is what it would have looked like. amazingly opulent it was it was just luxurious overkill um gorgeous tiles gorgeous windows i had it had fake um portals in there um just so you still it, it was just excess massive excess but wasn't ready so you couldn't use it on its maiden voyage it wasn't finished um that, that's the reality of it it was it was something that wasn't done so everything else was, was functional on Titanic by all accounts, but the Turkish bath was not. Now, somebody claims they used the Turkish bath on uh, April the 11th, whereas that's refuted. Now, this could have been a lady that played up and got a massage in there, but the actual function of the Turkish bath didn't work. You couldn't use it. Um, and there were reports that there were half-eaten sandwiches and whatnot in there from the, the guys that were working on it when it said, so like, we're done. So it was kind of lock it up and let it go. Um, the, one of the remarkable things about the Turkish baths is that it flooded very slowly. So water didn't smash in there, so it didn't destroy everything. It very slowly filled with water. So the tiles and whatnot are still there, and it still looks really nice. And on one of um, James Cameron's expeditions, he was able to get a probe in there. They were able to have a, a good look at the Turkish, um, the Turkish baths, and it is one of the areas of the ship that is the least damaged, the least affected. Now, naturally, it's been sat at the ocean for uh, bottom of the ocean for over 120 years, but there's neither here nor there. If you look at if you look at it on here, it does look it it looks good. So you can see from that a lot of the stained glass finishings survived. Um, a lot of the tiling kept its color, um, which is remarkable. But of all the ship, all the rooms they found on Titanic so far, that is the one that is the most kind of as it was. I mean, it is naturally it's been devastated, but 
it, it gives you an idea of the grandeur. You can see the kind of the, the opulence of the whole thing. And um, the Turkish bath is remarkable. The Turkish bath was right next to the swimming pool. The swimming pool has got a very sturdy bulkhead sealing it off. So there is a chance, there is a belief that the swimming pool is potentially in immaculate condition. Whether or not it is, I don't know. Um, at some point, you would imagine that as the wreck decays, access to the pool might become open. Um, and we'll see, but there there is a belief that the pool will be in as good, if not better, condition than the Turkish baths because of the sealed bulkheads that were in there. Because of the nature of, of the pool having the, this volume of water on board, it had to seal. And because it was only open at certain times of the day, the belief is that that chamber is practically airtight and it's sealed. Whether or not it is, I don't know. I mean, it, no one does. It could, it could be absolutely destroyed. It could be as was, which is um, remarkable, really. Uh, who knows? One day we might find out. We, we might. But it's remarkable, again, when we look at our, our model here, that there was a swimming pool on board this. It gives you an idea of just how big this, this ship was. Um, because we, it's easy to sort of get lost in it. But when we look at the little ladders on our models, you think, wow, personal, this thing was huge. And it's, um, it's remarkable. But I'm very... Uh, one last look at it. I'm very impressed with this. Our beautiful girl is looking uh, remarkable. She really is. And imagine when we got the engine room in there and... It's going to look so good and it feels heavy now. It feels solid, feels heavy. And there she is. Beautiful. Um, that is all from me. We'll be back next year with more of the Titanic where we are building almost exclusively hull and keel. Um, and that'll be, uh, that'll be fun. That'll be a good one to shoot in for because we haven't got that much. We haven't got that much. To, how much? can't be that much more to go. I think we've got about another foot. I think we've got about another foot to go. Um... But we're nearly done. We're nearly done with the um, having a complete hull. Wow. I think that's where we want to get to, which means next year's going to be an exciting year. So every month next year, you would like to think this is going to move on dramatically because we do only have, if you're a subscriber, 10 deliveries, I believe, left. That's it. And then we are, we're we're done. We arrive at our destination at 11. 11 deliveries when we arrive at our destination. Exciting times. Really exciting times. Um, that is all from me. If you'd like to contact us, you can contact us at outlook.com in a world where you can be anything at all. Just be nice. I wish all of you the happiest of New Year's. We are live tomorrow night on New Year's Eve on the channel. So if you are watching this as in when it goes out, we are on live with a Big Ben build on uh, New Year's Eve tomorrow night. Swing by for that. Come and say hello and see you in New Year's with us in the nerdiest way you know how by building a model. Uh, Take care. Again, Happy New Year to one and all. Thank you for all your support through 2023. If you haven't yet, please remember to like and subscribe and be with us all the way to the, uh, to the end of this one. I'll see you very soon. Take care.